Good evening, everyone. Uh, it is Tuesday, December 18th, 6.30 p.m. Mountain Time. Uh, we have week two of Mod 13, DES 109, Graphic Design 1. Uh, I am Melissa Kinney, your Graphic Arts Instructor, and we are in uh, our second session of the week where we are going to be doing a little bit of a review for the week and going over a demo of the assignment for this week, as well as talking a little bit about the assessment. We kind of already went over the discussion last night. <clears throat> Excuse me, so you can refer to that recording if you have any questions on that. And uh, hopefully we can kind of get this week squared away before the the holidays start and you guys can all have a nice holiday break. So here we go. Let's get started today. Okay, so like I said, we have uh, week two. Our agenda for tonight is a quick, quick review. Uh, I will uh, just remind what we're going over to be talking about in the discussion. Like I said, I went over it yesterday uh, in detail. Well, we will be doing a couple more critiques, but I'm going to be doing that actually at the end of the session because we got through so many yesterday. And I would like to make sure that I do a full out demo of the assignment for this week. And then we'll go over a couple of tips for the assessment as well. For the week two learning objectives, the things that you should be looking at this week, we're discussing the relationship that the basic design principles and the elements have with the foundation of graphic design, how they work together, how you can put them together in a manner that composes uh, a message in an appropriate manner, that it uh, exhibits the design style that you're looking at. So the second Objective there, apply design style to a composition utilizing cultural influences of an era. So you're taking that era and applying it to your composition, <clears throat> excuse me, trying to reflect the uh, design um, aspects of that style. And we're going to be analyzing the design principle usage in your personal project creation. And that is where you are, are going to be you're gonna be bringing that into the assessment portion of this week's projects. <clears throat> okay, so let's actually just go over this real quick. I, we have an announcement check where we already went over the learning objectives. I'm gonna go over the media. And again, we already went over the discussion. I, I didn't modify this because normally, um, normally this is what we do. And like I said, we, we went really quick in the, the um, the lesson yesterday. So uh, we will go over the assignment and the assessment. So let me actually just close out real quick here and go down to the announcements or go over to the announcements, however you want to. Let's see. I want to make sure that I get because we have quite a few in here for this week. Uh, so for those of you that were having trouble last week with any internet connectivity, there is um, a announcement in here how to download the lectures when you have really good connectivity and then you can watch them later uh, so you have a, a video right there we have our week two schedule for Rachel Fields our class coach that uh, was actually the first the first one for this week the line breaks in typography this was a really great article that I found in uh, addressing Line break, and uh, actually, this is not. There we go. I was going to say this right here was not what I was looking at. Uh, kind of some some tips and tricks and kind of rules of thumb, how to enter in line breaks and where you should enter them. Excuse me. There are a lot of instances, and this is something that is very normal when you are learning how to work with typography, where uh, text is being broken up. In within the text box where you have a hyphen at the end of it and in most in most typographical media I guess is what you would call it it's not preferred to to show that hyphen you're gonna end up you know you, you'll be reading a, a book maybe some kind of novel or something and you might see that maybe even in a magazine or a newspaper but in banners and posters and everything, things like that are, it's really preferred to uh, rather work with horizontal 
and vertical scaling and the letting and the kerning to try to create a nicer composition. So here are some really good tips on keeping the, the balance in the lines and what to do and what not to do. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so, you know, for example, like right here, I learned more about Jane Elliott on Wikipedia. Um, you know, Jane and Elliot are getting broken up and that's a name. So you kind of want to keep that together. Um, my rule of thumb is if you're reading it out loud and you stop at the line break for a quick pause and it doesn't make sense, either try to reword it like it says right here, or you can, like I said, you can work with the other uh, design tools and InDesign. So uh, like this one right here says, I learned more about Jane Elliot on Wikipedia. That doesn't sound right. It doesn't flow right. And that's kind of what your mind would read. <clears throat> Excuse me. So instead, I learned more about Jane Elliot on Wikipedia. I would probably insert the line break right here and make Jane on the second line there. And then the bottom line would actually end up kind of being a bit more stable because it would be a little bit wider than the top line anyways. Or, you know, sometimes you actually have the creative license to be able to change the, the text a little bit, not in these projects in this course, but every once in a while you'll have a client or a supervisor that's, you know, giving you free reign on that so you can, you can change the text up a little bit. So these are some really, really great tips on how to lay out your typography. So that was that, that announcement right there. Okay, good. Sorry, oops, scrolling down too far. Uh, these two right here are about spelling and grammar because the, especially when you are the designer, you wanna make sure that you are giving off the best representation of yourself as you can and bad grammar and bad spelling can, can give off a poor image that either you're not paying attention to something or you're not um, just, Sometimes it shows off as laziness, uh, that if, even though you may, may may not be trying to project that image, obviously. So you want to make sure that the R spelling and your grammar are accurate. The This particular uh, announcement right here kind of gives a few reasons why it's important. And this article was actually based off of um, an article on LinkedIn. You can read the whole thing right there. And in addition to that, there is a plugin that you can use for Grammarly. You can actually use it for Chrome. I don't know if you can use it in other browsers. You're more than welcome to try it out. So we have a link here for the plugin. This right here is actually the, the icon for it, and it actually helps you correct your grammar and your spelling as you're typing online here, you know, same way that Microsoft Word did. So for example, let's actually, uh, let's go to, let's go to the discussions. And I will actually show you how it works. I installed it shortly before I started teaching. And uh, despite the fact that I do have, um, I, I had taken typing courses and my accuracy is pretty high, I, I still make plenty of mistakes or even my abbreviations uh, and whatnot, my capitalization and everything. So uh, Grammarly, oopsie, there we go, is a great tool. That helps with your typing within a browser. Now you can actually see down below here in this area that I'm typing, we have this little icon here that can, oops, excuse me, can actually indicate what uh, what mistakes I'm making. And I actually, I'm logged out right now of my Gmail, so it is not picking it up, but it would actually indicate here how many mistakes I have. So there would be just the one because it would indicate that this is a spelling error. And as I hover over it, so let me see. Uh, yeah, cause I don't wanna actually do that right now. Uh, as I hover over it, it would underline it and then it would pop up to have suggestions for either the spelling or the grammar depending on, depending on what it is. And you can either take that suggestion or you can ignore it. <coughs> Nine times out of 10 though, the suggestion's a good one and I take it. So uh, that's that announcement. We have the recording from last night. And then based on that last night, we, we did quite a few critiques. I actually don't remember where we left off, so I might end up needing to open a couple tonight to determine where we left off, but um, that's okay. And in this 
in this business, you're going to be giving critiques and receiving critiques all the time. And this particular article we went over in last night's uh, lecture as well. It's a pretty quick, pretty e very easy to understand article on how to how to give a good critique. Excuse me, my goodness, how to give a good critique and how to receive. A good critique or to receive a critique well um, to make sure that you don't take it personally and to get the most out of the feedback that you can not to look at um, suggestions as criticism necessarily I definitely like the word feedback better because it is not necessarily someone who is looking to criticize you they are actually trying to to help you help you improve help you learn so Definitely don't look at those as negatives. Look at them as feedback. Look at them as a way to learn. And additionally, when you are providing that feedback to someone else, to be able to do it in a manner that is not condescending, that's not negative, and that is helpful to that individual as well. Uh, just saying that you like something or that you dislike something isn't especially helpful. It just gives you your gives your opinion to that individual and when someone looks for feedback they're they're trying to figure out what works and what doesn't so this this article does a, a great job of kind of explaining those things and i actually also i do not have it up today because i only got the email about a half an hour ago and uh it was regarding actually let me uh it was regarding, I believe, a contest over the break. And that's not it. there we go. Let me move this over. It doesn't block your screen. Yes, it was about the winter break activity and contest. So I will actually be putting that information up as well. But like I said, I only got that about a half an hour ago, so I didn't get a chance to put that up yet. So that will be another one. And I will also be um, posting a reiteration of reiteration uh, yeah reiteration of <laughs> an announcement that I actually put up in the lecture yesterday regarding deadlines and everything with this with this week since we are a little bit um, a little bit different than in our normal mod because we have our winter break so uh, okay so we did the announcements we are did the learning objectives let's go to our media real quick <clears throat> Excuse me. This week, we I believe we're talking about Gestalt theory and there we go. Wait, we too. There we go. And uh, the design elements, what they are, how to integrate them within the within uh, the design principles, how to work with them. We have your pre-recorded lecture, which oh goodness, I didn't mean to click on that. Lisa Hammerschein is. Lisa Hammerschein, my goodness, excuse me. I'm trying to talk too quickly tonight. Apparently, is very good at her job. She does a wonderful job speaking in these um, these lectures, and is incredibly informative. So make sure that you watch those before you start your assignments and uh, discussions because they are they are definitely. Uh, incredibly beneficial there like I have said before your meat and potatoes of this course and if you're not watching the lectures or the even the, the pre-recorded sessions it's kind of you know you, you could be learning any of this stuff online anywhere but these these live sessions and the pre-recorded sessions here they're geared specifically towards these courses so they are definitely uh, they're the reason why you guys are are paying your tuition you want to make sure that you're getting your money's worth uh, so in addition to the sessions here and the pre-recorded session we have visual elements basic things that can be seen we have an article here we have another article on copywriting tools very helpful and our lynda.com playlist this week is focused on illustrator tools since that is the program that you will be using in your assignment for this week so we have that, okay, courses. Going back down, the discussion, just as a reminder, I'm not gonna go over it again because we already did it yesterday, is talking about, there we go, the menu redesign for the coffee shop that we are pretending that we have recreated. So we are talking about, how we would 
redesign the menu that originally had been in neutral shades of brown and used the same size words with a different font for every drink and why we chose to make the designs that we did. This is also going to carry over into your assessment where you are providing a critique and reasoning behind your design in your assignment this week. So we have, oh, and it didn't show up here. Huh. Oh, it's, you know, it's still loading because that my, my, um, my post here actually has two images, but this one's not showing up for some reason. So I'll have to, but it did show up last night. I'm going to have to take a look at that. So I had actually, I had just provided a menu A and a menu B just for my own post as an example of what I would be changing. And this is not the menu that they are referring to up here. That is a completely fictitious menu. So there we go. Oh, there we go. See, good. It loaded. So this, I, I had indicated some good points in this one versus bad points in this one. And you're more than welcome to do that in your own. I think oh, we only have one discussion today so far. So we're going to have to make sure that we, we get going with that. And um, so feel free to, to provide images, to provide other links, maybe some helpful information on designing menus. That would be that would obviously benefit the rest of the class. Last week's discussion was great. I very much look forward to the, to the discussion this week as well. And let's see. Okay, and actually, so we, oh, you know what? Okay, so we have, in our slides here, we, we went over the discussion. Assignment number two, that is the era-themed advertisement that we're gonna be doing, and <clears throat> excuse me, the design process and self-critique for the assessment. I actually had already gone over this. The pre-recorded session is on integrating design principles and design elements, again. The PDF visual elements and writing help articles, the lynda.com playlist on illustrator tools, doing drawings and shapes, and typing techniques. And I actually wanted to move this, but that's okay. So let's actually, let's do the secret question first. Um, what is one of my biggest fears? Do, 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 do. <laughs> we have spiders. Spiders is one of my biggest fears. I hate the little creepy crawly things aside from this little guy who's kind of cute. And Lucas the spider is actually one of my favorites online too. And AI. I, I, I'm actually going, it's ironic because I'm going to school for my master's in information technology, but my husband and I are convinced that AI, like Siri and, and you know, the, the Alexa and all that other stuff, know, they know too much and that they're going to know too much. So we're super like paranoid about all that stuff. And here I am talking over, um, over a webcam, but oh well. So we're actually we're gonna we're gonna jump ahead. We're gonna do a, a demo first, and then we'll actually do a few more critiques. Because, like I said, I want to make sure that I get to a full demo before doing a few more critiques. Since we did a really good job yesterday of kind of doing that, and we have got plenty of time today, which is awesome. And I don't know if it's because I am talking really fast or what, but <laughs> maybe that's an indication that I need to slow down. So let's get going here then. So assignment number two is following the design process and um, creating something from uh, a previous style. So, <clears throat> excuse me, this is the assignment essentially in five steps. You're going to choose and research the period. So you're gonna pick one of the three that you researched last week. Essentially, you are going to, um, you don't need to be researching anything new. Last week was your research. So uh, unless there is additional research that you wanna look into, that's absolutely you know, encouraged and, and whatnot. If you feel that you don't have enough information in the period that you researched last week, by all means, look at more images, do a little bit more reading, however however you, you wanna do that. Um, one of the things that I would recommend is out of those three periods, maybe actually take a look at the three of them and determine which one is most interesting to you, which one you would actually learn, like to learn more about, or maybe it has effects that 
you find really interesting or maybe they use color in a in a way that is really inter interesting and intriguing to you my goodness I, i'm tripping over my tongue today um that always makes the research that much easier especially when you have the choice to pick something i definitely would would go with something that you find very interesting so you're going to you look up its colors its shapes and its lines its fonts how it lays things out um, if there is any movement, what kind of imagery do they use? Mainly line drawings. Do they use photographs? Do they use really not any kind of imagery? It's all text. Is there very little text? So that's what you're going to be looking for there. You're going to be setting up your uh, illustrated document. Oh, and actually, I have this wrong thing open. There we go. Uh, so you're going to be setting up your illustrator document in. 300 by 700 pixels make sure i emphasized this last night in the lecture and i cannot emphasize it enough industry standard is width times height so you're going to have an image that is taller than it is wide okay so you're gonna have a rectangle that's gonna be standing on its side also make sure that you are choosing the correct unit you're choosing pixels and not inches not picas. Um, I had a student last time, I think she chose feet, <laughs> or I don't even know. The thing was absolutely enormous, uh, and I had a very hard time viewing it. So, and obviously she had to get docked points because that was part of the instructions. Um, you're going to be using the provided text. Oh, you know what, in my toolbars. I'm sorry, my, there we go. I'm just gonna move that. Um, I had Illustrator open here and all the things just kind of appeared. So you're going to be using the text that is given to you in a file. I'm going to show you that. And you're going to apply the appropriate font or fonts and the elements that you want to include in your image. So the, these fonts and elements are going to be the items that you have researched up here with your own spin on it. Don't be copying images from other artists because that's not really what we're looking for. We're looking for you to take a style and apply it to your own layout. Uh, number four, make sure to apply CREP, contrast, repetition, alignment and proximity, because you don't want it to look like crap. Um, I don't know how um, professional that sounds or not, but I just, I keep that in mind. I don't want my work to look like crap, so I make sure that I apply it. Uh, the number five, save the Illustrator file. You always want to make sure you save your native files. Export it to PDF and submit it. I cannot view an Illustrator file online, so please do not upload that. Don't upload zipped file, uh, excuse me, zipped folders. I need the PDF so that I can grade your work. In addition, in the submission comments, please put the error that you are working from. Sometimes, and actually, more often than not, I cannot tell what era it is. Uh, you are, you students are learning in this particular project how to apply a style, and if there is any confusion on how to do that, then unless I know what era I'm looking for, I can't determine how close you came to applying that style. I don't want to be thinking that. Um, you were working on the postmodern era, but you were actually trying to apply the you know the um modern era or that you were working with well victorian and heroic realism are completely different styles <laughs> uh may maybe okay uh, maybe you are working on the swiss international style and i think you're working in the flat style so i i need to know what era you're working on so leave that in the comments when you submit it please um, and then just remember that this is your chance to do something new you to, to come up with a brand new design if you are having trouble it's tuesday give me a call shoot me an email or a text um, maybe you can bounce some ideas off me and i can help you out and then i will be in my multi-session on thursday so i can always help you out there too take advantage because i am absolutely here for you guys um, so in order to fig figure out the style that you're looking for, you want to take a look at if lots of examples and figure out how they use these different elements. We have the elements here, we have the 
the principles here. How do they use point? Oops, excuse me. Uh, you know, dots. How do they use lines? Are they diagonal? Are they horizontal? Are they vertical? Are they thick? Are they thin? Are they hand drawn? Are they really straight? Shapes, same thing. Are they geometric? Are they organic? Are they um, really kind of bumpy? Well, actually, I was going to say bumpy, but that's really, that's more texture. Uh, color, are they muted? Are they bright? Is the composition typically monochromatic or is it kind of all over the place and they use every color in the rainbow texture wise like i said bumpy rough smooth uh glass like um you know how how much texture is there on that piece can you feel like you if you were to run your hand over it that you would almost feel something and type typography what kind of fonts are they using are they using Handwritten fonts, are they using serifs, sans serifs? Are they using block fonts? Are they bold? Are they really kind of lightweight? Are they using a combination of any of those? And then also while you are laying them out, make sure that you are also looking at contrast, repetition, alignment, and proximity like we have mentioned. If you need to, and I would absolutely encourage this, take notes, you know, just, just dot down a few bullets like you've got right here um, on the style. Sketch a few things out if you can, either by hand or within the program. Find these individual components, you know, play like a little hide and seek like we did in the first week. I think it was in the first session where we were looking for the design principles in that light bulb um, poster. Use Illustrator to convert anything that you need to vector, especially, excuse me, especially images that are low res that uh, are very pixelated. That's going to make your, your image nice and uh, crisp and the best quality that it can be. And then modify things as you need to. I myself had a, um, had a customer today ask for a lightning bolt for uh, something else that they have a lightning bolt already in their image. They don't like it. I found uh, a vector uh, image of a light it's actually kind of like a lightning storm I'm going to be extracting the lightning bolt and actually modifying it to fit within the typography of this particular t-shirt design so you know do do what you have to do in order to get your composition to work okay and uh, yeah this is for the demo so before we get going Remember that in addition to myself and the uh, Student Success Center and our class coach, there are plenty of tutorials in Adobe and the help link that I know that I've posted and on YouTube, especially if you have something specific that you are looking for, for example, how to create a zipper brush in Adobe Illustrator. And the only reason that comes to mind is because I had to do that this week. Uh, I had to create a zipper for a sweatshirt so you know the things like that are especially if you can get really that specific you can find things all over the place um, if you are just looking for something specific as how to use the pen tool which that information should be in your lynda.com playlist anyways however maybe that video doesn't really speak to you and you're able to find something else online that is a little bit easier um, effects. Feel free to use effects such as drop shadow and warping and, and beveling and that kind of thing, but only if they're appropriate to the style. Don't use effects just to use effects because that can actually detract from your composition. Before you apply anything, think about whether or not it actually fits with what you're trying to convey and the style that you're trying to work with. Um, imagery and graphics to copy and trace. Um, let me actually take a look here because I don't know. I don't think I posted the announcement just yet. Yeah, yeah. I do have some uh, vector and photographic um, stock photo websites, and I think that might be on schedule to be posted at the end of the week. But let me maybe try to post that beforehand so that um, you actually have that information. Uh, appropriate fonts. Make sure that you are looking for fonts that work well with the style. You can use dafont.com and Adobe fonts and or the Adobe, Adobe type kit like we mentioned earlier in the, the mod. Those links are also definitely in at least one of the announcements. Use appropriate colors. 
maybe try uh, swatching from some other previous images. Uh, check the rubric and check, check CRAP. Make sure that you're including all of that and you're using them appropriately. And then take notes as you're designing for your assessment so that when you're doing your critique, you remember what you were doing and what you were thinking. So let us do our demo. Okay, so we're gonna get started and I think it was said 300 by 600, there we go. I'm gonna go back to the assignment here. There we go. So like I said, we will be using Illustrator. Uh, again, we're returning to the three errors that we profiled in week one. And uh, this right here was just the file that you had to download from the first week that had all that information on it, which I have filed that away in that week. So I don't have it out, that's fine. So the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna be downloading this file, which has all of the content that you need to include in this week's assignment, okay? So obviously you don't need to include the word text, but Sky Studio, grand opening, February 17th. I'm actually gonna change that to 2019. 20% off all retail, visit skystudios.com. All that information needs to be included in your ad. So we are going to start out Illustrator 300 by 600, and I'm gonna copy and paste my file here, the file name, excuse me, and my Illustrator, there we go. We're gonna get going. So start out here, file new, or you might even have the dialog box that pops up here automatically and you can set up the information there as well. That's completely up to you. So we have inches here and that's not what we want. We're gonna change that to pixels. There we go, right off the bat. 300 pixels wide. There we go. By 600 pixels wide, okay? Oh, and actually we already have one right here. Look at that. So you might actually already have this set up. I didn't notice that last time. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'll wait for that to load. I don't think I had my rulers out. No, it does not look like I do. Oh, a new Illustrator. What, why, what version do I have open here? So this actually, I may have opened up a different version, which is not going to be that far off from what you guys would have because, um, oh, for crying out loud. Or maybe later. Uh, I just updated recently, but maybe I didn't, um, come on you. Maybe I didn't get rid of the old one. And, oops, oh, for crying out loud. Yeah, it looks like this actually might be 2018, but, it doesn't, I mean, it's not gonna matter that much. All this stuff is fairly the same. Okay, 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 go away. <laughs> Sorry about that, everybody. All right, so we're gonna start up again, 300 by 600. And I'm gonna control R, or probably command R, um, to get my rulers, because I like I like to have those out so I can tell when things are aligned and I can use my guides if I need to. I am going to save this immediately. I have pasted in my file name and I'm gonna do the grunge because that's one of my favorites. And okay, Melissa Kinney, bingo. So now I have my, my file all set and ready to go. I am going to open up that Word document one more time, and what I like to do is copy and paste my text right away in whatever document I happen to be working in. And as I go, I actually remove the text once I know that I have it. 
Um, that way I'd make sure that I don't miss anything, um, especially if I already kind of have an idea, okay, well, I want to put something up here and then right here and then right here, which I am doing that, by the way, I'm copying, copying that by uh, holding the Alt key and dragging it. Um, so if, for example, I wanted to do something like that, you know, I could eliminate my text as I go. Come on, you. And, you know, I, I, that way I, I know that I have everything. So, um, first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go look up the grunge era. And, oh, you know, I'm sorry, grunge era of graphic design. I needed to make sure I specify because I don't feel like having it bring up images of bands. Now, I think I kind of like this look right here. This kind of grungy kind of look. We have some diagonals right here. And uh, so I think I'm going to actually start by doing that. Oh, I actually closed right out of that by accident. And I actually am also going to import, I'm going to place a photograph that I actually have on my desktop. Um, simply because I know it happens to be on there and I know that it is um, appropriate if I can find it because I have there it is let's see do I want that one actually I think I actually want to go with this brick one so I'm going to bring that in oh and it's way too tiny obviously <laughs> I think I probably just imported it into a, um, a little block there by accident. So let me try that one more time, if I can find it again. Come on. Obviously, you can see I have a lot of different kinds of work on here. Oh, for God's sakes since I know that it's right here. <laughs> Just post, uh, uh, click and drag. So now that I have it in here, I'm actually, I would embed it, but I don't want to do that just yet. <clears throat> you will need to embed it, um, or you may need to embed it when you export it as a PDF to make sure that it stays. Now I'm going to do a clipping mask to get rid of this excess here. I'm going to make this block right here, 300 by 600, since that's the exact same uh, size of the board that we're doing and I think I'd like this background to be the same size and I have this right on top of my background image the uh, the brick mortar whatever it is here I'm going to select both of them and select right click and clipping mask and boom now the only thing that I can see is the area that was overlapped I'm going to bring that to right to the back and I think I will also actually, I'm going to fade this out a little bit. By the way, I have not um, really considered what I wanted to do here. So you are seeing this all, you're seeing my thinking in re real time. Um, I did this for the last class that I also taught, the last time I did DES 109, and I was all set up and ready to go. and. Um, I felt like it didn't give enough of the, the raw design process when I did it. So I figured I would just kind of fly by the seat of my pants on this one. I actually want to make this not a yellow. <laughs> I wanted to make this kind of a, almost like a beige. So we're going to adjust the color slightly. There we go. That's better. And I'm going to work in the transparency. I'm going to try a couple different, actually that looks kind of like what I was going for. Maybe, there we go, that's better. Let me see the comparison. Yeah, there we go. And now I'm going to group those two together so I don't have to accidentally, I don't have to keep fighting with that. Um, so now Sky Studio. I have no idea what that place is. Uh, I'm thinking maybe, 
you know, I was thinking maybe like a uh, like a bungee jumping or parachuting kind of place. But you know what? I think instead we're going to go with studio and this is going to be like a painting place. So I'm going to go and let's see. I'm going to see if I can find. I'm going to go to Vecteasy. That's a free vector site. And I'm going to see if I can find a paintbrush. And since you guys aren't using these commercially, you're using sites like this is very easy. Ooh, I love that. That's not really what I'm going for, but, um, ooh, and actually, I'm even seeing things here that I wasn't planning on using, but might work a little bit better. Let's see. I think I would actually like to use this, oh, and look at that grunge paint banners, perfect. So I'm gonna go with a standard license because that, um, I don't have to pay for. Okay, so we have it downloaded, let's extract it. I'm extracting it on my other monitor here, which is why you can't see it. Okay, and I'm gonna bring it in over here. Now, let's zoom out a little bit. I don't need all of them, so we're going to embed it so that I can edit these images. Ungroup. Let's see what we got here. Release clipping mask. And sometimes when you have, there we go, sometimes when you have artwork that you haven't created, sometimes it takes a little bit to kind of get it ready to go. And I think I'm going to use maybe a sage. There we go. Yeah, that's actually even a little bit lighter than I really wanted to go, but that's okay. And I am also going to move my text off of here because I'm not ready for that just yet. And there we go. I like that. Oops. I'm going to actually keep that off there. I'm going to pretend that that's not there for now. You know what? I'll just use the Pathfinder tool actually right now so that I'm not confusing anybody. Pathfinder. There we go. So I just wanted to kind of put that there. I'm actually going to make this my offer. So like I said, I like to move, oops, I like to move text around. That obviously was on something on the bottom. Now because I have a, oops, excuse me, because I have kind of a uh, grungy, detailed looking background here, I'm actually gonna make my text within here a little bit more plain than if, there we go, if, uh, if I had a solid background instead. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna try a, a blocky font. And let's see what I got up here. I know. Boulder is a decent one because it's kind of, oh, Avenir might work. Yeah, you know what, let's go with that so I'm not wasting a ton of time looking. Now remember, you can look into font uh, that has the categories. It's one of the reasons I love that thing. Oops. Oh, you know what, I probably have an extra space there, which is causing that problem. Yep, there we go. And I'm actually going to make this white as well because I want it to stand out a little bit better. Oops, there we go. There we go. So now it stands out just a little bit better from the dark green. I'm going to align these horizontally. It's the, the vertical centers, which I know doesn't make a lot of sense. It's horizontal align, but it's the vertical centers that are being aligned. And I apologize for that. I'm not the one that made the rules. Um, let's go back to Avenir, but I'm going to do a slightly different look for a little bit of contrast. Yeah, let's go there. Okay, so we're going to, we're going to use that one. I'm also going to use white for that. And I know I'm not using swatches here. I don't think I have anything loaded right now, but because I'm just using black and white there, I am not concerned about it. Okay, and now despite the fact that that was centered, 
because I italicized it, it's going to look a little off center. So I'm actually going to increase the horizontal scaling just a little bit. And let's see what that oops, what that actually does. Sometimes it'll fix it. Sometimes it won't make it. Maybe I'm going to move it over just a little bit. And um, I actually think I'm going to copy one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I'm actually going to make whoops. Oh, I hate this isolation mode. I do that all the time. Oh, case in point. So you know what? Actually, I'm going to do this. So I want to actually make a little bit of a shadow. Oops, a little bit of a shadow behind that. There we go. But I didn't. I didn't want to use the drop shadow tool because sometimes it doesn't really work the same way. So all I did was kind of scooch it over and scooch it down just a little bit. Creates a nice little effect. Okay, and now I'm actually going to group the text together so I can adjust it within my, my swatch here if I need to. And always, always save. It is so important to make sure you do that um, because it can be devastating if you work for something for three hours and then you have lost it. So, um, so now I'm going to actually add this right down here. I'm going to put it right on the bottom and I'm going to actually make it all caps too. Is it sizestudios.com? Because um, I think the caps, because I have all retail, which is right above it, I have that in title case, which is upper and lower case. Um, I think, oops, I think using all caps will again create a nice contrast. And I'm also going to use Avenir, I think, for this as well. I don't have anything that's compressed, unfortunately, which is really what I was looking for. But that's okay. We'll just, we'll just kind of smush it in here. Because I don't want to, um, I don't want it to be overpowering because that's kind of like an afterthought. If you want to learn more about Sky Studios, you go to the website. But the message here is really the grand opening. Okay, so, so far we have gotten the grand opening. We've, uh, or I'm sorry, so we've gotten the, the offer. We've gotten the website. So let's feature the grand opening. Um, and I'm not sure how I want to do this and we don't have a ton of time left, so. I am going to separate these two things. I'm going to make the date on its own. And I am going to open up my text, or excuse me, my type. Because I actually want to try to, there we go. This is the letting. That is the line spacing. There we go. Come on. Yep. See, there we go again. Oops. It was just a little bit too too big for me. We want to make sure that we reduce that that space there. And I actually think I might want to put this at an angle. I'm not sure yet. I'm going to try it and see how it works. And you know what? I don't like it left justified because I have this extra stuff right here. Let's try. See, that doesn't even really do what I'm looking for, but you know what? I think I'm also missing something. I need, I need a paintbrush or something from Vecteasy that is not these grunge things. So I need to find something. I want to find it quick. Let's see. Let's see if I can find anything that will work here. These really are not what I'm going for. So I just, I need a little something to indicate Sky Studios. Um, and see, all of these are really more the result of the paintbrush and not the actual paintbrush itself, which is not what I'm looking for. So, in an instance like this, um, this is a little bit better, I guess. In an instance like this, I would probably actually try to create something myself, but because in the uh, the 
essence of time, we're not going to do that. Come on. Okay, do this very, very quickly. We're extracting files. And now that that has been brought in, again, I am gonna need to ungroup and release clipping masks and all that great stuff to try to, oh, actually, did I just grab? I actually might have grabbed the JPEG that was in the folder, which obviously is not, oh, there we go. Which obviously that would not have worked. There we go. I'm gonna use this guy right here. Because the paintbrush actually kind of looks, or the, uh, the bristles actually kind of look very similar. And I think I'm actually even going to, Hmm. I want to give it a little bit of a distressed look myself. So, you know what? That's going to take too long. But that's what I essentially would be, that's where I would be going with this anyways. I would be attempting to put this, or put, or put this on top of the paintbrush to kind of give it a nice, a nice, um, distressed kind of look to it. And I'm going to actually make this text, this green down here, so we have the repetition of it. Oh, and that actually does not look the way that I really wanted to. It's not, it doesn't have enough contrast. So we're going to try that shadowing effect also again over here and see if that will work. And Uh, it does it a little bit, but you know what? It's still not quite enough, so I'm going to lighten it up just a bit, see if that helps. That's better. It's not great, but it's better. If I had a lot more time to work on this, I probably would. But I want to make sure that we get through this. Oh, that's the wrong one. Sorry. And even that probably is really not what I'm going for here. Um, so we have Sky Studios I would place in here just for myself just to have it be kind of fun probably and I would probably play around with it a little bit until I got that right I would change the text again um, the date come on sorry everything is working kind of slow here the date I would want to make sure that I put somewhere near the grand opening here to make sure that the proximity of the event is close enough to the location itself. And please understand that this would not be finished. I would definitely keep working, but we only have a few minutes left, so I'm, I'm going to stop right here. Uh, but this is essentially how you would work with that. Once you think you are complete, you're gonna go to File, Export, and Export as a PDF. If I can, oh my goodness, actually, you know what? I can actually probably save that as PDF, I think. Yes, okay, you can actually do file, save as, excuse me, PDF. I'm gonna put that right on my desktop. Don't worry about saving any particular setting. You don't need crop marks, you don't need color bars, you don't need any of that wonderful stuff. Just save it. And when you open it, or when I open it, this is what I should see. Okay, so that is, uh, that is my Christmas letter is what that is. Apparently that was still open. Okay, that is the assignment for this week. Let's go over our assessment briefly. Oh, what is that? Nope, I don't need that. Okay, oh, and just a reminder, uh, the, the bottom of the assessments and the assignments you have your rubric right here so you have exactly what the assignment is looking for um, if you go through and okay yep I made sure that the assignment was on time and I met the file name requirements and it was a PDF boom you're gonna get five points right there um, 
proper use of the, so the software, you can go right through this and you can make sure that you get your 25 points, your 20 points, your 15 points, just by following the rubric. And again, if you, are, if you have any questions, please, please, please tell me. So uh, for the assessment, okay, you are going to include an introduction paragraph, a body paragraph, and a conclusion paragraph. You are going to be discussing your, remember, you are going to be critiquing the project that we just did. You're going to be critiquing the banner that you are creating. So you're going to briefly introduce the design problem, what you needed to make, and any audience considerations. So what are you doing? You're creating a banner. Why are you making it? Who is the audience for? Okay, talk a little bit about that. The body paragraph is going to be explaining essentially what I just did, but as you are doing it. So why did I choose, let me actually bring it back up. Why did I choose the colors I chose? Why did I choose the paintbrush? Why did I choose this area right here? Explain the different elements that you are going to use. So I'm, I'm working with contrast, the white on the green. I was working with repetition using the same font style over and over again. I was going to distress this paintbrush a little bit because a lot of the effects from the grunge era kind of had that look to them. Um, so you're going to talk about why you made those decisions on laying things out, the color scheme, the font choice, and um, bring it all right back to the design principles and the elements. Don't necessarily talk about, you know, oh, well, I, I liked this, so that's why I did it this way, because um, your opinion isn't necessarily going to be the best justification in the professional world. You need to make sure that you are talking about design principles and how you are utilizing them. And then in a uh, conclusion paragraph, reminding your client of the design problem from paragraph one and summarizing your design de decision and why you think it's going to work. Okay. And so from here, your assignment instructions are using Microsoft Word. Again, introducing your product, your project, describing the elements and the principles. And again, if you just go right through here and scratch these off as you include them in your paper, you'll be golden. Uh, why you chose to use the elements and the principles you did. Describe how each element and principle is making your piece overall stronger. Conclude with a summary paragraph. Um, you can use um, InDesign. Um, on a letter size page if you want. Excuse me. <clears throat> so essentially, I mean, you can open up your InDesign file and put this on the second page and then put the PDF in InDesign and combine them. Um, so, because we have, I'm sorry, we, the, the ad goes on the second page, I'm sorry. Uh, because we will be placing the ad on the second page of the document so that I can refer to both of those things at the same time instead of going back and forth. So you will be starting in Microsoft Word, or if, I mean, if you want to actually create a text block and write it all out in InDesign instead, skip over this whole Microsoft Word step, that's completely up to you, um, however you want to do it. The words need to be 650 words minimum. And then here is your file naming convention, okay? Um, excuse me, that's how you're gonna be saving it, the InDesign file, and then exporting it as a PDF. Remember, I cannot open the InDesign file, I need it as a PDF. Uh, and you only get one chance to upload as the correct document, so if you, if you make the mistake twice, unfortunately, I need to give a zero. Um, so that is, that is it. We have our rubric right down here as well. We didn't get to any critiques today, but I felt it was a little bit more important to go over the assignment instead. Um, because we did so many yesterday and um, you know here are just a few tips for the assessment like I said make sure you write it in Word or you can do it in InDesign and then use the spelling and grammar check tools cover those points that we listed copy and place the ad that you use in uh, Illustrator that you created in Illustrator and make put the PDF into the InDesign document save the InDesign file and then save the InDesign file as a two page PDF and then take a look at it so um, you can actually make sure that it looks how it's supposed to. It should, let me see, I, I know there were benchmarks up here somewhere. Essentially should look like this. We're going to have the written portion, 
And then on the second page is your ad. So that is what you are going to be doing there. Okay, um, and remember the graphic design is a creative process. You saw my creative process this evening. Um, I, like I said, I would have kept working on it if I had the time. Usually, you know, there, there are projects that take hours sometimes, and I would have definitely kept working on that. But it, it was a start. It kind of gave you guys an idea. Um, with our, our little quote over here talking about visual communication, the designer, that's you, works with a variety of communication tools in order to convey a message from a client to a particular audience. Keep that in mind when you are designing. Who is this going to be talking to? Um, because that is the that is the important thing, that the main output. So hopefully you folks will be able to complete this project without a problem. But if you don't remember, I am here on Thursday, uh, two, uh, excuse me, 1230 mountain time for my multi-session. Come in, talk with me, ask questions. If you need help, give me a call, email me. I am here and I want to make sure you guys all have the greatest winter break that you can have. So on that note, um, I wish you guys all, if I don't talk to any of you, I wish you all happy holidays and uh, get some rest. Have a good one.